Good morning. I'm David Bowman, the Executive Director of the Four Corners Regional Education Cooperative No. 1, up in the Four Corners area of New Mexico. And I'd like to share with you my vision for what an effective, what a true virtual school could look like that addresses the deficiencies of both current online learning and the traditional bricks and mortar school, while yet bringing together the advantages inherent in both. So first, I'd like to take just a moment and talk about what we have currently for online learning. To immediately dispel a myth, we have no virtual schools currently. We have things that we call virtual learning, but there is in fact no school. There's no place where the education occurs. There's no there's none, none of those things that we see in a traditional school setting. We don't have the collaboration among students. We don't have that spontaneous voice live interaction from uh, the teacher to the students and among the students. Students don't have an identity within current virtual learning opportunities. They are simply a name on a roster and they all are working independently. Even if you've got two or three students in the same school taking the same online class, there's nothing about that learning platform that actually connects those students together. So basically, all of those things that really make education powerful and valuable do not really exist in current online learning options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my vision for what a true virtual school might look like. And we're going to use this particular gaming platform to talk about what those features may include. So we know that about 12% of students, 12% of the U.S. population, likes learning new things, likes thinking about new things, likes expanding their skills. They're probably going to do pretty well in any environment. But then we have the other 88% that needs something far beyond just the ability to access content, read some online things, watch some videos, and take some quizzes, and all of those other features that are common in virtual schools. Well, that 88% also struggles in the traditional classroom, and I believe it's time, and I believe we have the capability now to create something which is going to help them to address their needs. So when we talk about an equitable learning environment, we don't just mean ac the ability to access information, but we mean the ability to participate in a learning environment that actually meets their learning needs. So let's take a look at this platform and we'll talk more about the equity issues and the, the advantages and struggles that kids have as we explore. So right now we are starting in something called a guild hall. A, think about the Harry Potter books and movies. All of the students are organized into what they call houses. A guild is very much like that, whether it's 20, 40, 60, 80 students together they have a specific place within the platform that they uniquely call their own and a built-in social network. And that is what we see with the Guild Hall. Now, a couple of things to notice. One is this is a rather fantastic looking place. This is important because what you're seeing here was actually designed by the players within this particular guild. There's a great deal of customization, and here's one of the players right now, Zumak, who for all practical purposes could be a student, and you'll notice that his appearance is also quite customized. This is important because one of the things that we often forget about is that kids need an identity. They need a the way to present themselves and their characteristics and their feelings of self-perception and their personalities to the other students. Well, if you're just a name in a roster, you can't do any of that because you're simply a name. You don't have a physical presence within that virtual environment. However, here we can do that, where each student can customize their own look and appearance, have an identity that is shared not only with themselves and the teacher, but also the other students. Now, the other thing that's important to note about the customization possibilities is when we start looking at the issue of gamification. Gamification is basically taking the game structures of effort and accomplishment and reward and applying it to a learning environment. So think about students as they're 
completing assignments, uh, conducting their work, engaging in class, they gain points for this. And those points can then be turned into tangible physical um, rewards that students collect and can actually present and share with others. So, um, and then guilds as a whole can also collect points based on the accomplishments of their members and turn that into the ability to customize their unique space. The other thing that a guild structure or cohort structure provides is that students, each cohort of students can have an advisor or counselor or proctor, whatever you want to call them, that is basically there to help support the academic and social needs of the members in that group, to basically watch out for them and shepherd them through their learning experience. We don't have that currently in online learning. Now, there are some schools that are trying to do that classroom within a classroom, a school within a school structure, kind of designed around that. Um, but it's also possible in this type of an environment here. So if it's possible, and we know that students benefit from it, then it behooves us to create that kind of that kind of experience of support within online learning. All right, so this is actually a really big environment. It goes on in halls and rooms and so forth, but I think you get the point here. So I'm simply going to jump at this time out to the school lobby. So as we are thinking about the benefits of traditional schools, the benefits to education of traditional schools, we start thinking about things like cooperative learning and project-based learning. We think about more of a constructivist approach to not only acquiring content, but also understanding and applying new concepts. That's very difficult, perhaps impossible, with most of the online offerings that we have now. But this type of a platform is designed specifically to create those kinds of experiences. The other thing that um, we think of when we think about traditional schools is the fact that there's a physical place. When you walk onto the campus, when you walk into the school building, you know that you are in a place specifically designed, a place that the purpose is specific to learning. You are there to learn. You're not in your, on your couch, you're not in your school library staring at a computer, you're not in the coffee shop soaking up the free Wi-Fi. Here, you are actually in a school, so we want to create that physical presence of the school to the extent possible. So, when we walk into most school buildings, there's usually some kind of a lobby there, and what happens in the lobby? Students are hanging out, they're looking to see what other friends or classmates are available and so forth. That's what we're doing here. Now, I want you to notice all of these are players and they are highly customized, as you can see. Each one has uniquely designed his own presence within this environment. And there's a lot of them. Okay, yeah, I think you sort of get the point, but that's what we're doing here. And I know that guy right there, yep, good player. That's what happens in a, in a classroom, a school lobby also, right? You run into people that you know, and you say, oh, look who's here. All right, but you get the point. So let's go ahead and actually head out to the school campus and see what it might look like and what advantages it might have. We'll also take a look at a classroom and think about what the student's experience might be within the actual class setting. And there go some players right now. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. There we go. Let's run, not walk. All right. So now we know that so we have that 88 percent of students that need a lot more than what the current online options are providing to them online is great for accessing a lot of content but it's not so great for developing a learning experience among students for all of those types of things that actually help kids learn well we can do that in a true virtual school such as an environment like this so here is here's a, a sample of what a campus might look like it is a physical place and one of the advantages here is that students when they are in their classrooms or when they're on a campus they actually have to go to class 
we're trying to create a sense of engagement within the learning platform itself not just log on and here's your new video or here's your message from your teacher but actually create an engagement where a student has some kind of involvement and participation in the learning environment so most of the online games are set up this way you know they have got a, they have a place much like this so we've got buildings right this over here might be the sciences hall farther back that might be modern languages hall where the classrooms are and over here might be the um, music building for example why not right but let's actually go and look inside of one of these buildings and see what a classroom might look like and I'm just going to run over to one that I pre-selected so I started thinking about this issue about virtual schools really about 20 years ago 20 years ago the New Mexico State Legislature provided some seed funding to create the first New Mexico virtual school and I was a part of the initial design team and became its first director well when we took a good look good hard look at current online options at that time nothing really seemed to provide a good learning experience content yes experience no so I turned to the gaming environment and I actually came across this game at that time this is really what we wanted to create at that time um, we didn't get it what we got instead was apex learning and online videos and texts and some graphical displays and things like that some questions some answers maybe some essays well fast forward 20 years still nobody has created this kind of an environment which sort of blows my mind because these environments these platforms have been available for a long time this one alone has been available for about 21 or 22 years and yet nobody's ever turned it into a classroom well it's overdue it was needed then it is especially needed now so 20 years ago when I first looked at this as a possible platform I walked into this exact room right here and I looked at it and I said wow that looks like a classroom all we need to do is add some students add a teacher bring in some outside resources and a few other things and we actually have a class where I can see the teacher the teacher sees me I see my classmates they see me we can actually listen to and talk to one another live I mean I mean normally now if a student has a question they post the question on a chat board or something or maybe they send a note to the instructor and then check back a few hours later and see if they've got an answer a few hours later is not sufficient and it's certainly far far behind what the technological capability is now instead how about this a student walks into this classroom there the students attendance is automatically logged and they pop up some messages from the teacher right away they see their other classmates they listen to their teacher they see the presentation the teacher then assigns each student to a small group of three or four students and drops them into a voice chat room so they can talk to one another then the students figure out the problem they come up with the solution they think about the issue that they've been presented and so forth and finally they reach some kind of a conclusion well they signal the teacher and say hey we're ready to go the teacher brings everybody back into the general chat the general voice chat then I and my group come up on the stage up here we present our information to our classmates we answer their questions we talk to the teacher we see what else we can learn from that experience why aren't we doing it I mean that's what we want within a live classroom the traditional live classroom building so why don't we want it here well the fact is we do want it here but it's currently not possible because there is no virtual school all right so that's a classroom and let's head back on out to the campus so who might this kind of a virtual school appeal to and how many how many students are we actually talking about well when we start thinking about equity issues we begin to get close to a number of the potential market for this type of a learning platform so as I mentioned the equity is not just can you access content but really it's about can you 
participate in an environment that is appropriate for your learning needs. We, we have the same question when we talk about culturally responsive education. It's not just having some artifacts that reflect your culture, but actually learning in a way that is common within the culture from which you come. So the equity issue is really the answer to the question for who would use this type of an environment. So who are they? Well, we know we've got a lot of non-traditional students, older students perhaps who have dropped out, they have to take care of their younger siblings, or they're working, or they failed some classes and basically just checked out of the school and off doing their own thing. This brings them back. We know we have a lot of disassociated students, students for whoever, whatever reason, don't feel like they belong within the traditional classroom. So whether they're too big or too small, too fat, too skinny, maybe their language different, maybe their experiences are different than their classmates, whatever the case may be, or their personalities, or maybe they've got you know some kind of a learning difficulty, but for whatever reason, they don't feel like the classroom, the traditional classroom is meeting their needs. And they're gonna do one of three things. They're gonna drop out, they're going to just simply check out emotionally, or they're going to act out. Well, what if we can remove all of those social barriers to learning? Because in, in an environment like this, those social aspects do not exist. Instead, we are left with only those things that actually spur greater collaboration with among students and greater participation in the learning experience. Well, then we've also got students who move from one place to another. You know, think about it. A student's family moves from town A to town B, and then suddenly they've got to start over again. The, they don't know their student, their, their peers, that they don't know their teachers. There's no relationship, which so many students need with their teacher and their classmates in order to engage. The school doesn't know what to do with them, so they put on some classes that maybe or maybe don't fit. But what if the school could follow the student? So even if they go from town A to town B, they're still in the same class with no break in their learning experience. Or homebound students, for example. But another equity issue is simply the, the problem between urban versus rural schools. So let's say I'm a student in a, in a very rural school. And there's a lot of them, not just in New Mexico, but nationally. So it's a kind of a small school, yet I want to take some specialized classes. I want to take a French class, for example. I'm interested in that. Or I want to take a physics class. Or I want to have a specific kind of music class. Or whatever the case may be. Something outside of English 1, 2, 3, and 4, Math 1 and 2, Science 1 and 2, and so forth. All right. Well, first, in that rural area, is there a teacher that has the competency to teach it? Maybe, maybe not. Then, even if there is a teacher, are there enough students to justify that class? Because if there's not a teacher or not enough students, then there's not going to be a class. And what's going to happen, if we're lucky, is that student will simply be dropped into some kind of an online learning environment. Well, that's a real issue. Why is it that only the urban students have the greatest number of courses available to them? Well, when we're talking about an environment like this, a platform like this, we are not limited to just the local student population and teaching staff. Because we can draw students from all over the U.S. in order to create the classes, and we can draw instructors from all over the U.S., which means that we can offer just about any course either needed or desired at just about any grade level because we, we're working from a large enough population size that it becomes possible. Even if it's only five or six students, it kind of makes no difference. If it's 150 students, well, then we've got four or five different classes or six different classes. So we can address those equity issues around rurality. And then think about what's happening in today's day and age with the COVID-19. Suddenly, we've got a lot of students that were basically just thrown out of school, sent home, and said, okay, we'll send you some online stuff. I don't think we're going to get out of it what we're hoping to get out of it. I don't think it's going to be nearly as effective as what could have potentially happened within a classroom environment. Well, what if students are enrolled in an environment like this? Whether they've been participating or they are newly participating, suddenly we can still pr provide those students 
not only the learning content, but also the learning experience. We can provide them with all of those benefits they would normally get that are necessary for learning to happen. Now, if we don't have those benefits of the traditional class, we don't have the engagement, we don't have the exploration and the constructivist approach, and we don't have the interaction and the relationships between teachers and students, all of those things that kids need to learn, what that means is that kids are not going to be learning. They're actually not going to be learning. And we've kind of wasted their time and we've wasted our time as well. Well, we can do better than that if we have a true virtual school. And that guy is riding a spider, which is creepy. Okay, so when we talk about turning points into customization, there's a good example right there. All right. So we also talk quite a bit about the, the personalization or the creation self-creation of identity within a platform. Let me just take a moment and show you what I look like as I'm running around. Because right now, you don't see me. You're seeing virtually out of my eyes. Like, you know, if you're walking around in a hallway or something, you don't see yourself. You see what you're looking at. And that's what we're doing. But I actually have a presence here, too. There I am. I'll do a little dance for you. All right. Well... Other students can see me, I can see them, we can interact with one another as real people. And if I wanted to, I could, you know, run around this way. I don't particularly prefer it. I like this because it actually gives me that sense that I am in a real place. So some other ways that the platform uh, increases engagement. You see all of these buttons at the top of the screen called hot buttons. Well, each one of those opens up some kind of a window. We might have a window that says, here are your current grades. Another one that says, here are the assignments and whether or not you've completed them. And here's your instructions. Here's messages from the teacher or your classmates. Or here are some reminders for you. Or here are some upcoming things that you need to know about. Whatever the case may be, we are increasing students' engagement within this environment to give them that true sense that they are in a school. One might be... What other classmates are online and do you need to connect with them or other people on your friends list, for example. So all of this is completely doable by most students. Would this work for the K through three group? Maybe, maybe not. But I do know for a fact that there are many players in this game who are in the fourth, fifth and sixth grade uh, levels and they're able to navigate it successfully. So I think it's fair to say that we're really, we are easily looking at grade four and above. And now we suddenly have an awful lot of kids nationally, potentially internationally, who could take advantage of the opportunities and the benefits that a true virtual school could provide. So why hasn't why hasn't education stepped up? Here we are back again at that sample classroom. And I talked about 20 years have gone by and nobody's done this. Well, I think, the re I think there are two reasons why this doesn't yet exist. One is most online learning options are designed by educators. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to recreate content delivery. But what they haven't really figured out is how to recreate that learning experience because of issue number two. Gaming companies have been doing this for decades now. But the educators might be thinking, that's just games, right? That's not a serious place. That's not where we go to learn something. That's where we go to play. And yet these gaming companies have made millions upon millions of dollars figuring out one essential question. How do we keep people engaged within this environment right here? How do we connect them together? How do we address not only their need for struggle and accomplishment and reward, but also how do we address their social emotional needs in order to keep them fully embedded in this game? I mean, millions of people play these types of games worldwide and they're doing it by choice and they're paying real money to do it. I'm not sure we could say the same thing about classrooms, whether it's traditional classroom or it's the online learning options. But the gaming companies have figured it out. So why don't we use what they have already built and then simply infuse it with what we need for the educational purpose? That's truly my benef my 
vision for online learning. Create a virtual school that brings together the best of both online learning and the traditional classroom, and yet at the same time removes the barriers that are inherent in both of those. So if this is a vision that, that you can also share, I think we need to talk about this. We need to get together. I've got a sort of an outline of what it might take to truly develop this type of a system right here. But first, let's think about the possibilities. Let's walk away from this very short video and say, hmm, I see what this can do to create an equitable learning experience for all students. So I'm David Bowman, REC Director uh, in the Four Corners of New Mexico. I look forward to hearing from you, and let's see if we can actually build a virtual school that helps kids learn. Thank you very much.